Howdy everyone, and today I want to take you on a whistle stop tour about polarizing filters, why they're so neat and how to use them. Because over my years of professional photography on YouTube and in real life, you have no idea how insanely useful I've constantly found these to be. I think no photographer should be without one. This is a little update to a similar video I made many years ago with a bit more info that I have learned over time. Now that photography almost exclusively takes place in a digital realm, casual photographers don't really use traditional filters much anymore because you can do so much in image editing, but polarizing filters have survived very nicely because what they do is so clever and unique. They absorb polarized light, which is normally light that's been reflected off of a non-metallic surface, including light from the sky. So, in a nutshell, polarizing filters can get rid of reflections from many surfaces such as water or glass. Or even, as you can see here, book spines, among many other surfaces that are reflecting light in some way. This even includes people's heads when you're doing some portrait work or shooting video. Photographers also like to use polarizing filters on sunny days to shoot vegetation because they reduce the reflections on shiny leaves. I have found them really helpful in my landscape photography as they can really cut down on reflective glare from the foliage around you in a large number of scenes. Polarizing filters are particularly well known though for having the very cool and useful effect of darkening a blue sky, as you can see here. Now, that effect depends on a couple of things. Firstly, it obviously depends on how much you turn the filter. So you may need to readjust your filter each time you reposition your camera until you get the effect you're happy with. Secondly, the effect depends on your angle of view. If you're shooting the sky, the effect will only work about 90 degrees from the direction of the sun. If you shoot against the sun or with the sun behind you, the effect won't work. Here you can see the sky being darkened quite nicely, but when I turn back towards the sun, suddenly the only effect the filter seems to be having is to reduce the reflection off of the tiles of the church roof. And it's partly because of this that using a polarizing filter on a very wide angle lens can give you some pretty uneven results. This picture was taken on an ultra wide angle lens on a full frame camera at 14 mm one random effect is that polarizing filters can get rid of the image on a computer screen because LCD screens emit polarized light. When shooting with them through certain windows, they can also produce some very bizarre, if colorful, effects. All kinds of companies make all kinds of excellent polarizing filters at all levels of price. There isn't a huge difference between them all. I'm particularly happy with Marumi Fit and Slim filters. They are good value, good quality, and slim enough to generally avoid adding vignetting to your images when using wide angle lenses. One obvious thing to remember is to get a filter that's the right size for your particular lens and make sure it's a circular polarizing filter, not a linear one. Something else you should take note of is that polarizing filters block off about 50% to 75% of your light and you won't want that in all situations. However, this does mean it can make a useful emergency ND filter if you need to cut out a little light for whatever reason. You can even get polarizing ND filters, which are useful for landscape photographers who want to slow down their shutter speeds, and also very useful for drone pilots. I use them all the time with my drone flying. So there you have it. That is pretty much everything I know about polarizing filters. Now go buy one and improve your photography. Ciao everyone.